The January transfer window is still three months away, but Johan Langer and his recruitment team are already tapping up potential starlets to add to Big Ange's young, hungry squad. Meanwhile, more concrete reports of the numbers involved surrounding Amanda Staveley's reported investment bid to take over Joe Lewis's Tottenham shares, and Deki Kulisewski has given more thoughts into Tottenham's start to the season and some of his teammates. All this and more on today's episode of the Spurred On podcast. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. I really appreciate it. Do press that like button. Do press subscribe in the bottom right-hand corner if you haven't already for daily Tottenham Hotspur content and uh, every so often daily Premier League transfer news as well. And you can become a member only £1 a month. All the details of how in the description box below. But let's get going with some of these wonder kids that Tottenham's recruitment team are now apparently looking at. And uh, according to reports, Spurs are interested in, Bournemouth, interested in Bournemouth's Antoine Semenyo and maybe looking to, to lodge a €40 million, Euro, that is over £33 million pound bid for the 24-year-old in January. Um, Semenyo has registered three goals and one assist already in his sixth league game so far this term. He joined Bournemouth from championship side Bristol City in January 2023 for a reported £10.5 million. Now, I have to say, from what I saw of Semenyo uh, in the Premier League, especially last season, I really like him. So direct, uh, really never afraid to drive at his defender. And uh, I was actually surprised when we got uh, Wilson Odebear in that we weren't uh, really looking to get Semenyo in at that point, but I'm really uh, excited at the thought that maybe we're going to keep going for him in January, and if not in January, next summer. Let me know in the comments what you think of Semenyo. I think it's another example of Tottenham really looking at the long term in trying to fix up um, where Son Hyung Min plays realistically, because Sonny, although still an absolutely elite finisher, in my opinion, and I know I'm in danger of uh, upsetting some people here. In my opinion, he has just lost a little bit, maybe half a yard or a yard of pace. And um, I think we saw that actually at the weekend in the Man United game by how much easier Timo Werner was able to get separation from his fullback than we've seen from Sonny so far this season. And obviously, with Ange Ball, those wide forward positions are so key to the success of the formation and the style of play that uh, it's very clear what with the signings of the young South Korean player coming in in January uh, and Wilson Odebear and now the interest in Semenyo that we're really looking to shore up both sides of those to have attacking pace and drive and quality as well. So that's why I'm excited about the potential of a Semenyo signing. Other news coming from Bild in Germany this morning are that Tottenham are working hard to sign Hertha Berlin youngster Boris Mamutsa Lum. He's 17 years old. He came up through the ranks in the German side's youth system and he made his debut for Hertha Berlin against Elversberg at the weekend. Bild say he became Hertha Berlin's youngest ever player at just 16 years and 363 days. No wonder then that Tottenham Hotspur with their new strategy, certainly new in the last year or so, since Johan Lange has come in anyway, to really try and pick up some of the world's most exciting young talent or probably more realistically the world's most exciting young talent that Chelsea aren't trying to hoover up first. Uh, The Germany international, uh, under 18 international sorry, can operate as a defensive midfielder in central midfield uh, as a more box-to-box player and also as a right back. Does that um, sound familiar in terms of players that Ange likes to get in? He wants utility players. He wants players who can play in many different positions across the pitch. That enables him to have a tight squad of players like Archie Gray who can fill in in lots of different positions. So it's no surprise that he's interested in in Lum. Uh, Tottenham apparently been interested in this player for a long time uh, but also fighting against them to get him in and this may be a problem. Manchester City, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, Bayer Leverkusen, Ajax, Red Bull Salzburg and Barcelona. However, Tottenham trying to get ahead of the game because apparently at their intervention, uh, invitation, sorry, not intervention, at Tottenham's invitation, Lum has visited their training, phys- training facilities and has attended three Spurs home games. So that does suggest that Tottenham have uh, definitely a concrete interest. And pa- uh, uh, one other possible uh, benefit for Spurs is that he is represented by CAA Stella. And as we know, uh, any player who is represented by CAA Base or CAA Stella or any of the CAA uh, agents 
uh, agencies, they uh, have a really good uh, reputation and also a good relationship with Tottenham Hotspur. So this could be one that actually happens. You never know. And it definitely does fit in with Tottenham's new transfer strategy over the last year or so. On to those reports of the numbers involved in Amanda Staveley's potential move to invest in Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, apparently those talks have advanced over the past week. Staveley wants a 25% uh, stake in the club, which would apparently bring in a fee of above £500 million. Pounds. Staveley... Um, it's it's just under double what Staveley and her husband invested in Newcastle United. But of course, the most important thing that they did for Newcastle was really put together the consortium uh, alongside the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia to allow that buyout of Newcastle. Uh, and now, when they since they've sold their shares in Newcastle, they're looking to invest in another Premier League club and Tottenham are at the top of their list. Daniel Levy apparently trying to sell Joe Lewis's shares of the club, which stand at 70% of the entire ownership, which would mean that uh, Amanda Staveley's 20 to 25% would not only be shared between her and her partner, which is Murdad Gadusi, he was also involved uh, in the buying of Newcastle, but they would both own apparently 10 to 12.5% each, with then the door being opened for other Saudi investors down the line who presumably Staveley and her partner would bring in as contacts to the club to try and buy up more shares let me know in the comments guys how do you feel about that do you want Saudi investment in the club do you want Amanda Staveley in what do you think the benefits are over and above the obvious which is Daniel Levy has been very open about wanting more capital in the club more um, standing money with which to be able to pay for uh, higher transfer fees and higher wages and more of the infrastructure plans that they've got including the hotels and the like but what else can Stavely bring in? Is there anything that maybe you would envisage her trying to take some of the football side over from Daniel Levy, maybe in the same way as Sir Jim Radcliffe has done at Manchester United? And if so, is that something that you would want? I personally am not so sure about having Saudi investment, uh, sports washing and the like. I wouldn't want to be involved in anything where... In reality, it was the public investment fund of Saudi, but they weren't allowed to say it was because they're not allowed to invest in another uh, British club. So they're using then kind of proxy investors, similar to what it looked like um, the Qataris were trying to do uh, when they uh, were looking to buy Manchester United before Ineos and Jim Radcliffe won that battle. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of that. Could be an interesting time, but uh, I have to say from my point of view, I have some Newcastle fan friends who I... Um, you know, I was quite vehement in my disappointment that Newcastle sold out to Saudis. So for me then to be excited about the possibility of Tottenham selling out to the Saudis, I'm not sure. But of course, what I would say is I do want us to have the best tools possible to try and push on and win titles. So it's a very difficult one. It's quite t I'm quite torn about it. But that's the reality of modern football. There is an element of if you can't beat them, join them. But also, I do want my club to be run in a sustainable and also ethical way. Uh, just some stats here based on the uh, on Tottenham's start to the season. They've won Spurs have won possession in the attacking third at least eleven more times this season than any other team in Europe's top five leagues with fifty. That shows that Ange Ball is working. I think the negativity around Ange Ball needs to wear off now. There really is nothing about it that isn't working as far as I'm concerned. Um, also, no player has created more chances from open play so far this season in the Premier League than Dejan Kulusevski. Uh, and that leads me nicely on to Kulusevski, some of his uh, later quotes about the win at Old Trafford. He said, the feeling you have now is the one you want. That's why you play football. We showed how good we are. He was also asked about Dominic Solanke. He said he's impressed me a lot with his work rate, especially. He's a great guy and he's making a lot of things much easier for us. And when he scores goals, that's the best thing. Completely agree. I think Solanke's hold up play has been absolutely incredible. And now he's adding goals to the equation. Fox in the box in the right place when the knockdowns come or when the goalkeepers are making mistakes. Dejan Kulisescu was also asked about Brennan Johnson. He said he's been unbelievable, but it's a good thing that he's off social media because social media is overrated, I think. So now he can focus on the right things to play football. Four games, four goals is unbelievable. Today he could score two. He hit the post one time, but he's been doing really well. And he's a really good, young, good guy. And we need him. We need him to perform like this every game. And we're here to support it. Yeah, really good to um, see and hear 
Brennan Johnson's teammates really getting behind him and add to the confidence that is clearly building within Brennan Johnson at the moment. We've got a raw, talented, exciting player there. We all need to get behind him, not just his teammates, but also the fans. And I think that's really starting to happen, certainly at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, and with the away fans where they're really starting to sing, there's only one Brennan Johnson, which I love. Uh, he was also asked about Brennan Johnson's price tag potentially weighing him down. He said, I think that can weigh down on you as a player because millions of people have opinions on you every day. But the important thing is to not listen to anyone and just be with your family and trust in yourself and work hard. Then nothing can stop you. I think every player goes through tough times and you just have to go through it because you need to learn. Sometimes you're questioning everything, but you just have to forget and remember why you started. Remember who you are and where you want to go. That's what I'm doing right now. So talked a little bit, haven't we, about Kulisevsky having a little touch of the Zlatan Ibrahimovic about him in the way that he talks and the confidence that he brings to his own game. And I'm loving hearing that from Deki. As he's been put in what he describes as his correct position of attacking central midfield, he's really growing not only as a player on the pitch, pretty much the best player in the Premier League at the moment, I'd say, along with maybe Cole Palmer uh, and a couple of others. Let me know in the comments who you think are doing the best in the Premier League at the moment. But the way he talks, he's really becoming a leader in the changing room, I think, and uh, very exciting to see. I can't wait to see him play again. My guess is that'll be against Brighton on Sunday um, because he'll probably not start against Ferenc Varos. Uh, tomorrow night but maybe he'll get some minutes late on in the game certainly if we need to uh, pull a result out of the bag uh, four Spurs players have made it into Alan Shearer's team of the week after the impressive 3-0 win away at Old Trafford they are uh, Mickey van der Ven obviously after that incredible assist Brennan Johnson Deki Kulisewski and James Madison so good to see the uh, attacking central midfield partnerships of Madison and Kulisewski getting in there people really starting to see how good those two players are together and how impressive that partnership is uh, growing. I love it. Uh, Harry Kane was asked whether he watched Spurs' 3-0 demolition of Manchester United. He said the following. He said, yeah, I did watch the game yesterday. I thought it was a really great game from Spurs. Probably one of the best I've seen in a while. I really enjoyed that one. Even before the sending off, I thought Spurs were really dominant. It was great to watch them get a good victory. Come on, Harry. Back you come, mate. In the summer. Go and win the Champions League and the Bundesliga and the Cup there this season. And then come back to Spurs uh, Tottenham, maybe Stavely can provide the money it'll take and he can play as the nine. Although, frankly, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Because Dominic Solanke is in the nine now. He's not as good a player all round as Harry Kane, but he is pressing in a far more Ange Postacoglu type way. Let me know in the comments below, would you take Harry Kane back at this moment? Uh, by which I mean, you know, in the summer. Uh, or would you stick with Solanke on the basis that his pressing is so elite and he's really getting the Ange ball system uh, flowing from the front. Uh, just some news on Wilson Odebear's injury. Apparently he'll be out for another six weeks with his hamstring injury. That's according to Paul O'Keefe. So that what is, that makes probably middle of November. The early reports I heard, uh, having read in Lekeep, was that it was going to be middle of October. So that's about a month longer than expected. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, and final bit of Spurs news for today. Uh, I'm sure you saw it, but if not, Atletico Madrid striker Julian Alvarez, the ex-Manchester City player, he was asked... Uh, who the three toughest defenders he's ever faced are. And on it, of course, he named QT Romero, his teammate in the Argentinian national side. And an absolute, what an absolute nightmare QT Romero is to face for any striker whatsoever. Double hard, reads the game incredibly well. And I think the best passing centre-back in world football today. Some of those balls that he plays in between the lines, into the midfielders, where it looks like there's no gap and he finds a pinpoint gap, and he's so consistent with it. We're very fortunate to have him. And even though all the leaks are that Real Madrid are interested in him and trying to get in his head, I hope he signs a really long-term, huge money deal at Tottenham to lead us in to trophy-winning times. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please do uh, press that like button. Press subscribe in the bottom right-hand corner for daily Tottenham Hotspur content. And listen to this on the audio platforms as well. Go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, type in the Spurred On Podcast and you can listen to me there when you're running or driving for my daily content. Have a great rest of your day. Come on, you Spurs.